Right now on the National Weather Desk, tornado damage, twisters, damaged homes, and more on Florida's Gulf and Atlantic coasts. And all of a sudden it just felt like, like that and you couldn't breathe and I fell back. All I remember is like I woke up on the ground. It's finally here. We have everything you need to know before tomorrow's annular solar eclipse. Make sure you have Eclipse ISO certified glasses for viewing and have them on the entire time. Winter is just around the corner and Utah's mountain communities are getting ready. Every single year is different. That's the way it is in the mountains. We'll look at efforts to save vulnerable monarch butterflies. We all need to take that additional step to support their population. And important information about the danger of driving on wet leaves. From our nation's capital, this is the National Weather Desk. Good morning and welcome to the National Weather Desk. I'm meteorologist Matt Ritter. Multiple tornadoes damaged uh, homes and businesses across central Florida early Thursday morning. Communities on both the Gulf Coast and the Atlantic Coast will be cleaning up for some time. The National Weather Service says at least two tornadoes hit the cities of Clearwater and Crystal River along the Gulf Coast. There are no reports of major injuries, but damage is extensive. An EF2 tornado struck Flagler County along the Atlantic Coast. The wind ripped roofs off homes. As residents say, they hid in interior rooms or under some mattresses. And in Palm County, officials say multiple families experienced catastrophic property loss when a tornado hit yesterday morning. We have two reports on the damage, starting with reporter Daryl Matthews. Flooding was the problem in Nebraska. The city of Broken Bow was one of the hardest hit regions. It got more than five inches of rain flooding local streets. Several cars drove through high water. Not a good idea. Remember, it only takes six inches of water before tires can lose traction. As the saying goes, turn around, don't drown. Tomorrow, everyone in the continental United States will have a chance to see a solar eclipse. And depending on where you are, you might get to see something called the Ring of Fire. Meteorologist Will Stafford explains what that is and where you can get the best views. And if you don't have the glasses needed to safely check out the eclipse, there is still a way for you to get a great view. Meteorologist Ryan Mirando shows us a DIY eclipse viewer you can make at home. And in other astronomical news, it turns out our galaxy may weigh less than previously thought. Researchers came to this conclusion using recent measurements from a European Space Agency satellite. They conclude the Milky Way is the combined weight of trillions of suns that are lighter than first thought. The new findings have profound implications for scientists' understanding of dark matter. The U.S. Drought Monitor released its weekly map on Thursday, and as you can see here, hardest hit areas remain in Louisiana, Mississippi, and Texas, along with the plains in the Pacific Northwest. California, much of the Rockies, and the Northeast, and the Atlantic coastline have little to no drought impacts. There's not much change from last week except for some minor improvements in East Texas, and unfortunately there's no rain expected there over the next seven days. A California community is looking to bounce back after a lengthy drought dried up hundreds of local wells throughout the area. This past wet winter is seen as a chance to help reverse course. Muna Sadik has more on what officials are doing to keep water in the area. And we want to remind you about our podcast, Off the Radar. New episodes drop every Tuesday. This week's episode is all about the solar eclipse we've been talking about. You can find Off the Radar wherever you listen to your podcasts. And coming up on the National Weather Desk, there's already snow on the ground in parts of Utah. We'll find out what they're doing to prepare for the winter ahead. And we'll look at one, what one community is doing to help increase the population of monarch butterflies. You are watching the National Weather Desk. Several inches of snow are already showing up in some parts of the country. Mountain communities in Utah woke up to several inches of snow this week. Ariel Harrison has more on what residents are doing to prepare for the winter ahead. And it's around this time of year that people start wondering how cold winter might be. The Ron Zahn has a look at some October folklore on predicting winter severity. And while not everyone has leaves on the ground yet, some areas where the trees are starting to shed could see some rain this weekend, and that could lead to a real risk when driving. Meteorologist Christina Ernie posted on TikTok about the dangers of driving on wet leaves and what you can do to stay safe. 
If you're looking for more content like that, be sure to check us out on social media where we post the latest from our team of meteorologists across the country. Just search for the National Weather Desk. In California, one community in the Hollywood Hills is doing its part to help save vulnerable monarch butterflies. The species were near the brink of extinction in 2020, but their numbers are improving. Joy Benedict has more on what's being done to make sure they continue to take flight. This weekend marks the end of Hispanic Heritage Month, and today we are highlighting Isha Renta Lopez, a meteorologist with NOAA. She sat down with Emily Gracie to talk about how her childhood in Puerto Rico inspired her to pursue a career in weather and why Hispanic representation at NOAA is so important. Um, I remember when Hurricane Hugo in 1989 was threatening Puerto Rico and like... Before we take a short break, we take in some views of beautiful Alaska. This weekend has some pretty great football games and meteorologist Katie Morgan has our football weather forecast. Thank you for joining us. Monday on the National Weather Desk, we'll look at how you can beat those seasonal fall allergies. I'm meteorologist Matt Ritter. Have a great weekend and we'll see you right back here on Monday.